What's up everybody, Rob here. So in the latter portions of the Middle Ages and into the early modern era, Venice was the preeminent naval power in the Mediterranean. Fleets of both warships and merchant ships plied the waters of the Mediterranean, the very lifeblood of the Venetian Republic. But where did these ships come from, I'm sure you're asking. Well, I'm about to tell you. This is a very brief look of the Venetian arsenal. Okay, so it started in the early 1100s with the Crusades. Now, the thing about the Crusades is that it's very difficult to get overland. Uh, Frederick Barbarossa tried it. It didn't really work out too well for him. Most Crusaders, however, were a bit smarter. What they do is they would go to Venice, or actually very popular, they would go to ports in Sicily, and from there they would get on ships and travel to the Holy Land. And at this point, the arsenal, or what would become the arsenal in Venice, was really just a series of docks built to house and build privately owned ships. And uh, there was a massive influx of orders for ships to transport the Crusaders during the entire Crusade era, and that's what kick-started this whole thing. Now, it changed from private ownership of just small, you know, private docks and such in 1320 with the construction of what is known as the New Arsenal. And it was at this point that things took a turn for the modern. Now, shipbuilding would be taken over by the state, and both warships and merchant vessels, the lifeblood of the Venetian economy, would be manufactured there. Now, at this point in history, most ships were built using the hull first construction, meaning that the outer hull was built first and that the inside internal framing would be added later for structural support. This method was used as far back as the ancient Romans. It was the way it's been done for thousands of years, and if it was good enough for the Romans, it was good enough for us. Well, this was changed by the Venetians. They figured out that if you actually built the internal frame first and then added the hull around it, it greatly would improve the efficiency of the shipbuilding process. Uh, you could actually do it with less wood, less materials, and you can do it in a much faster time. So that was the first step on the road to the mass production that would become the arsenal, but that was only the beginning. So after a few centuries of trial and error, really working out the system, basically they're revolutionizing the entire, in basically kickstarting a mini industrial revolution here. So, you know, it's gonna take a while to iron out the kinks here, but after a few centuries of this, uh, by the 16th century, thereabouts, the manufacturing reached its greatest height, and the shipwrights of Venice could churn out a galley in a single day. Yes, that's right, they could build an entire ship from scratch in one day. How were they able to do this? Well, through production techniques that would not be seen again until the Industrial Revolution and the modern era. So, first off, the wood for the ships would be harvested from a nearby forest on the mainland, which was reserved for this specific purpose. The wood would then be sent to various workstations where a large assembly line production would take place. The workers would make prefabricated parts that would be fitted together and basically in a process that is almost identical to a modern day automobile factory. Now, in traditional shipbuilding, the ship would be built on location with all the different parts added on, with all the materials being brought to that location and then built and then made specifically for that, that specific ship, which is highly inefficient as all the parts had to move to a single location and then added onto the ship and made individually one at a time. Highly inefficient and ultimately a waste of time, energy, and resources that could best be allocated elsewhere. Instead, they adopted, the Venetians adopted what is known as a flow shop method, which is the theory behind, well, a modern assembly line. The hull of the galley would be built, you know, again, with the frame first construction like we described earlier, and then it would be towed to each station where the masts, the rudders, the rigging, and all the other additions would be fitted on. This greatly improved the speed of construction, basically because of repeatability. You have the workers simply doing one single task repeatedly over and over again. It was much more efficient than basically doing everything from scratch right from the beginning. The This is kind of an early form of interchangeable parts. So we're not quite interchangeable parts yet, but the parts of the ship, say the rudder, for example, would be prefabricated using a standard template. So the people who make manufactured rudders would just keep churning out these specific rudders. The masts would be based on a pre-specified template. They would get the materials, they would carve everything out the way they needed to, and they would just do so over and over and over again. Now, this meant that they could focus on that task only, and they were able to increase their productivity in this manner. Now, again, this is not quite interchangeable parts when the, it came time for the mast and the rudder and the other parts to be fitted onto the ship. There would have to be some slight adjustments made for each individual ship because, you know, there are some variances there. We're not talking machine precision yet, but we are basically a major step towards the idea of interchangeable parts. And this is very similar to the Liberty ships that were used during World War II, which again were prefabricated 
uh, ships using a standard template that were then fitted together at a shipyard and then sent out into the Atlantic to probably be sunk by a U-boat. But hey, that's another story for another day. The Venetian arsenal became the byword for efficiency. For example, in 1574, Henry of France, while visiting the Venetian Republic, was eating lunch and during the course of his meal watched the fitting out of a galley, a process that could take several days, if not weeks, in other locations. They managed to do it in the course of a meal. At its height, the Venetian arsenal employed over 16,000 employees, which was over 10% of the entire population, making it the lifeblood of the Venetian economy and were able to churn out, in some cases, more than a single galley in a day. For example, in 1570, they produced 100 galleys in two months. These ships would be absolutely vital in the Battle of Lepanto in 1572, blunting Ottoman advances into the Mediterranean. I'll probably do a video on that. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Also at its site, there would be up to 100 ships in various stages of completion, ready to be launched for use by the Venetian Navy. In addition to the ships, numerous other pieces of military technology were developed at the arsenal, including bombard cannons, which are a pain of neck to deal with in Age of Empires, I'm just going to say it, as well as early handguns and small arms, which again would prove to be a decisive edge for the Venetians at the Battle of Lepanto and other conflicts in the Mediterranean Sea. Now, there were some downsides with the arsenal, and that came with the human side of the arsenal. Now, groundbreaking as they may have been at the time, the arsenal would be a disaster were modern assembly lines and there were just basically to be expected growing pains when you're basically trying to revolutionize economies in this sort of way there's going to be some issues uh, the big issue was that the workers were paid by the day and not by the productivity and they were hired for life so all the worker had to do was get the job get hired there and enter the facility and boom they received a day's pay regardless of any actual work done it was also extremely difficult to actually fire employees, short of them actually stealing or doing something illegal. So basically, you can imagine this was ripe for abuse. So uh, anybody who would be too old to work or too sick or injured or anything like that, they would basically just drag themselves across the gates and they would just enter the facility and, you know, just basically like clock in by, to use a modern terminology, and they would get a day's pay and they would basically then just sit around, you know, being non-productive. And this was actually true for healthy workers too, guys who were fully healthy, capable of working. Well, they would get paid by the day too. So they would sit around, they would gamble, they would talk, they would drink, they would do pretty much anything except, you know, actually work. And you can just imagine how this was, well, this was abused. And also there would be a great deal of double dipping. Basically, people would show up there, get paid for the arsenal, and then they would do a job there for something else. They would do crafts work or uh, any kind of manufacturing for another facility, another like a private institution, and they would get double the pay. And there was also a constant issue of theft, and people would be using the tools there or just stealing the tools and the other materials available and using it for their own projects and not using it for actually, you know, building ships and doing what they were paid to do. So, yeah, uh, in a modern assembly line, this would absolutely not be tolerated and would basically just drag down the efficiency and actually did drag down the efficiency to a degree. But, you know, hey, you know, we got to start somewhere. In spite of these issues, the arsenal was still able to maintain a very high productivity rate and that kept Venice as the preeminent naval power in Europe. About 10% of Venice's total expenditures were sent to maintaining its naval fleet, and other smaller arsenals were built throughout the burgeoning Mediterranean Empire. Particularly, there was one in Corfu, Greece, but these were more of maintenance stations throughout the Mediterranean rather than major production centers, but the idea is still pretty much the same. Now, all good things must come to an end, and as the centuries wore on, Venice's power declined and the arsenal's production declined with it. Production at the arsenal would finally shut down altogether with the dissolution of the Venetian Republic in 1797 with the arrival of a particular Corsican corporal. No prizes for guessing who that is. The arsenal would be rebuilt and currently it is a naval training base for the Italian Navy as well as a museum and ship preservation site. So, in the spirit of efficiency of this particular video, I actually got this done in less than 10 minutes. Yes, it's not entirely comprehensive, but you know what? You got the basic ideas here. I'm not an expert on this subject. It's just something I found interesting, and I figured I'd, you know, share it with all of you guys. And uh, yeah, I got it done in less than 10 minutes. This has got to be some sort of record for me. Probably isn't. I don't know. Any case, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. In any case, please hit the like and subscribe button. More videos will be coming out whenever I get around to it, and have a good day. Or don't have a good day. You're adults. Have any kind of day you want. See you later.